and we are live with Aaron Cleary, guys. This is going to be a great one. Let's get into it. Cap. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh and Fit Podcast. We're here with Aaron fucking Cleary, man. <laughs> My God-given middle name. <laughs> man. Hey, man. So I guess some quick announcements, guys. Today, Today's episode is actually brought to you guys by Let's Get Checked. Someone actually sponsored these two misogynists, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and sponsorship. God, just like that, man. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show, but, um, yeah, guys, what are some announcements? Uh, uh, pretty much guys, uh, late night podcast, patreon.com slash trash fit. Yep. We also have, uh, another guest coming tomorrow. Yep. And if you want to mention it now, but yeah, Donovan. Yeah. yeah Donovan. So, <laughs> Donovan Donovan's Sharp. in studio as well. Yep. And, uh, what else? Man? What else are we shamelessly going to sell? Oh, oh, we got merchandise. There Get go. that. Um, and sure. then we're, and then we're going to take the next 90 minutes to sell Aaron's books. Okay? Yes. So <laughs> yes. you guys are ready for a whole sales <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm kidding. so uh yeah aaron how are you man awesome minus the traffic yeah it, oh the yeah. traffic was oh. i almost didn't make it here well welcome to miami yeah i yeah. would say that it's a part of lifestyle yeah. Yeah. yeah uh unfortunately we do have some like people that actually live here versus you know yeah the midwest or yeah. whatever yeah all three of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh Yo, real talk dude is your thing really called asshole consulting yeah <laughs> I, I wasn't making it up you're the only one that didn't know about this oh he yes. was serious I thought he was yeah. <laughs> I thought this serious. is like okay you not knowing about asshole consulting is yeah. like Meyer never hearing of jimmy johns i mean that's the level you're kind of like what well, really? you never... <laughs> that's funny man i like it bro uh, uh, <laughs> yo uh can you send me the link in telegram for us if you can okay yeah like yeah guys all jokes aside right before we went on so fresh is like oh so so aaron what's your website what, what do you want us to plug <laughs> assholeconsulting.com he looked at him and was like, wait, what? what? It was like, Shreggy? yeah, assholeconsulting.com. It was like, what? And then uh, Chris was like, what? what? Like, I, he couldn't believe it either. So um, wow. for me, I knew, but it was but it was just funny to see their two reactions. I just pulled it up. This is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Chris. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Chris is like, wait, what? You can't even believe that it's real. Um, okay. Um, do we have any super chats or anything like that before we get into it? Yeah, we have uh, two oh, coming in. Already? Okay. Yeah, oh. yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's just, just Just so you know. Uh -huh. Right, my Heinyakers are gonna come in here, and there's gonna be Dre and Fred and all these other guys. So uh -huh. if they're if they're mouthing off too much, just let me know and I'll tell them to stop. Usually they have absolutely nothing. They had fun with yesterday. Yeah, they yeah. have fun, but they have nothing intelligent to say. <laughs> oh my problem. goodness, that's, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, okay, um, super Mo. chat uh, four nine nine. I gotta get my glasses. Shout Mo out Rizzo. to uh, Fresh and Fit and Aaron Clary. Keep the likes up. All right, thank you so Andy much. Andy on the block. Andy on the block. Uh, Every young man should read Aaron's books. And just thank for the, the new super chats, thank you. First super chat of the day. Thank you guys for that. So uh, go ahead, Fresh, take it away. So Aaron Cleary, right? <laughs> I kind of know who you are, thanks to Myron. But at the same time, I heard about you before. But for anyone that doesn't know, who is Aaron motherfucking Cleary? <laughs> uh, I, I, he was a mild-mannered banker, or credit analyst, economist at one time. Okay. Uh, Went to college back in the 90s, got a degree in finance, <clears throat> worked in banking for about 15 years. And then through various, uh, basically through the evolution of the internet, as bandwidth increased, I followed every major media platform. So I started blogging in 2004, mm -hmm. um, then podcasting. Uh, I even had a radio show for a hot 15 seconds <laughs> on AM at one time. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then, but as bandwidth increased, it was like, okay, can you, can you be the triple threat? And in, in the journalism world, it was, are you a journalist? Can you write? Can you do radio? And then can you do television? And now we have kind of a similar parallel where it's like, okay, you can blog. Can you podcast? And then do you have camera appeal? Can you do YouTube? Yeah. And I didn't design it this way. I thought I was just going to be some nerdy economist telling people about money and what bad things might happen or good things could happen. <clears throat> and no one wanted to hear it. And it was uh, 
quite by accident through through uh, hobby, uh, essentially, where I would write about economics and philosophy, got a big following, then started podcasting that increased the following. Mm -hmm. Now you got YouTube and and kind of I think a lot of young men and maybe not so young men have had this uh, journey where it's like, I'm going to become an engineer. But because of the Internet, people really want to hear about your marble collection. And, and boy, they, there's this dedicated, loyal group of marbleists out there, and they love collecting marbles. I like coins for some people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so now – and I wrote some books along the way, self-publishing, and they, they took every, – everything I tried to go to college for, Yeah, I, I failed miserably at. Uh, I didn't fail. I was a great economist. No one listened to me. I just wasn't cut out for banking. Mm -hmm. But while I was in banking, I also taught ballroom dance, and that oddly – led me down the entrepreneurial route where I had mm, to promote dance. my ballroom dance. Yeah. If there's a salsa club, I'll show you. Okay. Not you. <laughs> I have a hot girl and I'll demonstrate in front of you. What can I want tonight? So I want to hit tonight. Okay. If you want, we could do that. Are we talking like, like salt, like Spanish salsa? Like, well, cumbia, there's, what do you mean Spanish salsa? Like, you mean like salsa like, dancing? Yeah, salsa dancing. Yeah, yeah. Yo, salsa. Can you guys imagine Aaron, like, just like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just doing this thing there's, with the ladies. There's videos out there Asshole somewhere. Assholeconsulty.com, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, anyway, so that, uh, hmm. even though it has nothing to do with the internet, that was my earlier exposure to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And since I just could not hack into the corporate world, uh, Thank God for the internet because now that's what I do. So now uh, the entire time I was investing in real estate, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a minimalist, so I don't have a lot of expenses or you know, I don't have any expenses. It's just, uh, you know, cell phone bills and things like that. Right. But I paid off my house very early. Uh, I could probably could retire too if I wanted to, but I don't know what you do then. Yeah, right. I'd be boring, uh, right? Yeah, you'd be bored. Yeah. You know? And so now it's, it's kind of like I, I really just like hanging out, you know, helping out the younger guys not screw up like I did. And, and do better, you know, like, because you know, I came out pretty good, all things considered. I could have been so further ahead mm -hmm. had I just had someone 10 years older, 20 years older, Tell say, you. hey, kid, don't do this or do do that. And I would have been you know, a lot more money, a lot more free time, a lot earlier. And so that's kind of what I'm doing now with the books and asshole consulting and podcasting and things like that. No, you're right, because like we, we, we see all the time on the show, right? If you can have a mentor. I can cut your learning curve. You can mm -hmm. go way further than you would, would normally making right. those same mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, because I heard you were a leprechaun collecting the coins, but <laughs> 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 pretty, wise. pretty wise, man. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's uh, that's hilarious. Um, okay, I, it's okay. Chats. Oh, got some super chats. Okay, right. um, uh, I cannot read. I think I got it. Okay, uh, Juan Doe with the uh, two uh, two dollars super chat. Is Peter aware that Cap is in Miami? Yes. Hello, Cap. Yeah. Hello, uh, Cap. Then we got. Uh, no, no, stop stop I $2. <laughs> $2. secretly nice guy deep down that saved me. Absolutely. Oh, he is a nice that's guy. So sweet, man. Yeah, he did. He did actually help me. Uh, last, he gave me some great uh, real, real estate, estate advice yesterday. Yeah. Yep. So I got more to give you. So yeah. before you go and sign on any papers, let's talk before we do. That. Okay. Yeah. See, there you go, guys. Aaron is not the bad guy that you guys all think he is. He's, he's not a crabby all, old man all the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, we got Frank uh, Sonar with the Canadian $5. Just picked up Bachelor Pad Economics. Hear nothing but positive things about it. Looking forward to reading it. I probably recommended it to you because that's yep. the number one book I recommend all the time on Shout money. Shout to Frank. Uh, which, uh, speaking of which, so you're known for your array of books yeah. that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, can you take us through each of the books, what, what they cover, a quick little oh, synopsis okay. on each? <clears throat> well, a quick one. Uh, the first one is called Behind the Housing Crash that I wrote before the housing crash crashed. Oh, okay. That was in 2000. 2000. Well, I started in 2006. Yeah. Published, okay. I think, 2008, early 2008. It got published the day Lehman Brothers fell for bankruptcy. Mm, and I had to update my charts because it was happening so quickly. Uh, so that was my first book uh, for serious book. Right. Uh, then the second one probably was Bachelor Pad Economics. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm sorry. It's Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. So that was a short book preventing young people from choosing stupid degrees, uh, obviously. And no one listened to Like women's to studies? It. Yeah. And, and almost <laughs> – 80% of the other degrees offered out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that was 2011. 2013 was Batch of Pad Economics. And that's just basically a financial uh, roadmap for any guy at any point in time. Pick it up. How old am I? Start at this chapter. And so it starts at 14 and then goes all the way up to death yep. for estate planning and wills and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, uh, there was 
Curse of the High IQ, I think. Mm. That was about the drawbacks. When did you release that one? That was recent, that, right? Yeah, I don't see. I don't, they kind of blur together. I mean, yeah. it, it's probably not in chronological order anymore. But mm -hmm. uh, another book was Curse of the High IQ. That's about a lot of people, probably your audience, ought to all get their IQ tested and find out where you are on the bell curve because I have a feeling most people are going to be far right, at mm. least two standard deviations. And then there's these huge sociological romantic even psychological uh, drawbacks mm -hmm. there's positive things of being smart but there's also these drawbacks that no one talks about so that's another one yeah. reconnaissance man that is um, a book on how to figure out where you want to live in the united states mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the primary reason for that was to avoid people having to buy multiple houses pay multiple realtors fees move all the time not get their full use out of it because your housing is your number one expense over time yeah Unless you're married. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so that one's like, hey, go figure out where you want to live first, then buy your house. And it goes how to. Uh, Poor Richard's retirement is very similar. You guys know uh, Jacob Lund Fisker, early retirement extreme no. guy? Hmm. Um, well, he, he did a very mathematical, analytical Break book down. on how to retire cheaply and quick. And I think he was, it's, you know, four percent withdrawal rule, and I think you needed like three hundred thousand or quarter million to retire oh, wow. by the age of six. Well, and it depends on numbers and cost of living and inflation. What I did with Poor Richard's retirement is you can you could tell someone all day, don't major in women's studies, don't major in event planning management, major in accounting, major in engineering. Getting a human to change their behavior is borderline impossible. And so with Poor Richard's retirement, what it tries to do is deprogram de people's compunction to spend and then reprogram it with a new reason, point and purpose, <clears throat> so that it's it's almost like going through withdrawal uh, so that you can say, okay, I don't need fancy cars. I don't need a fancy house. And if you get rid of that, it makes retirement a lot easier. So that if, if you are a minimalist uh it really puts retirement well within the reach of, I'd say, 85% of the American population. Whereas the current way people go now, 85% uh, of people will not have enough money to retire and they will have to work till they're dead. Right. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, and the, the only other one that comes to mind is my most recent one called The Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI on the Pursuit of Women. And that is where I return back to economics as well because – we joke about it, and unless you're married, ha ha, it's the most expensive thing. Uh, yeah, for men, it is. Yeah, it literally, Seriously. yeah, no. with, without a doubt. I mean, it's it's. And I want to definitely growth. delve into that deeper as well okay. in the interview. Yeah, yeah, you're you are going to spend most of your money. Uh, certainly, it's going to be the plurality of your time, money, and resources chasing girls. Yes, and there's financial. There's classes on buying property, investing in real estate. There's classes on what, if financial and career planning and all that. There has never been an economic cost benefit analysis done on Western men's pursuit of women, even though it's the most expensive thing they're ever going to pay for. Can I answer that as yeah. well? I have so many friends that are older, successful guys mm -hmm. and some that aren't successful because they, and they all say the same thing. If I had spent my younger years not chasing women, mm -hmm. I'll be way further ahead. Right. And it's right. No one talks about it. I mean, they might have closed doors, but in open, they don't talk about it. Yeah. And just to give you an example, because you you bring up a very important point with all financial planning, and that's time. Say so back when I was younger, well, I'll, I'm not I'm not giving away the book or anything like that. But your actual cash expenditures probably on the low end. I try to be fair, but this is probably on the low end that you are going to spend is about two hundred sixty five thousand dollars. The average guy is going to spend about two hundred sixty five thousand dollars over the course of his life pursuing, maintaining, and ultimately disposing of a, of a girl, Damn. of women. Oh, right. Because you get, you got, if they divorce you, okay. you got to dispose of them and there's yep. costs incurred. Not everyone gets divorced. I did a weighted average and it's all very actuarial and statistically valid. Uh, but the, uh, uh, I forgot where I was going here. Uh, yeah, that kind of time. money. Fuck time. this shit, I'm All oh, the time. Yeah, that's right. I got Fuck it. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Uh, so back with it's $265,000 cash expenses, if you were to take that money and just throw it in the S&P 500, do you know what you'd have by the time you retire at 65? A million? <laughs> Way more. Uh, 10 million? $6.9 million. Damn. Just, to, you know, if you, it's assuming and each year it was like an annuity you invested into it. So the explicit costs are huge, $265,000. 
the opportunity cost had you invested that $9.6 million. And this does not even include entrepreneurship or probably some of the older guys who probably had a lot of hustle and all yeah. of my wife, I had a business, but my wife took half. I've yeah. heard these plenty of examples and stories before, but your average guy, if you just were to take that money and invest it in the index fund and assuming the index fund, you know, S and P continued as it did, you'd have multiple millions of dollars after tax. And, wow. and that's, those are the numbers I want to kind of introduce or want to introduce into that book. So men realize, whoa, okay, I like her. I want to stick things with inside her <laughs> and, and play with the things she has on her chest that seem more fun than what I got on my chest. Uh, but there is a huge price, and you have got to realize that you know your, your biology, your programming, is going to compel you to spend a lot of time, money, and resources in the pursuit of women. And then um, my point was, one, is it worth it? And two, if you're going to do it, there's a lot smarter ways of going about doing it. Damn. I got, man, I got a conspiracy. Uh, dude, I got a little theory. I knew here. you were going to say, is it, is it the... Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I was thinking about this as you were speaking. I've always said this, and people think um, it, they think it's funny, but uh, now, now that I have a real economist here, let's let's yeah. discuss this. This is totally off topic, by the way, but let's yep. do it. Wow. It's perfect. Okay. Oh it's this perfect. is off the cuff. Of I've always said, oh, we'll get another. No, no, coffee. that's I'm just a no, 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 we're at, no, we'll, we'll get it. But um, I will say, Tom, can you help uh, Aaron with the coffee real quick, please? Just a little. I don't want to yeah. have to like go pee in the middle of the. <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay. So I was talking about this with Fresh the other day, and I've mentioned this for a few years now. I've always said that homosexual men have a lot of money. If you mm -hmm. look at a lot of cities that are going through gentrification right now, San Francisco, uh, Austin, Texas. Brooklyn and New York, a lot of cities that are up and coming or expensive to live in, mm -hmm. there is a huge homosexual community. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, why are they at the forefront of every area that's up and coming and or expensive to live? Here in Brickell, right in Miami, uh, South Beach, Miami Beach, they all live over there as well. And, I, and it hit me. When you don't go after chicks, you save so much money. Because think about it. Mike, could you say that one more time? <laughs> when you save money, when you don't deal with women, you save so much goddamn money, man. Because let's keep it real. When two dudes meet up on like Grinder, it's not like, oh, let's go on a dinner date or whatever. Yeah. It's like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm kind of <laughs> horny. What about you? Well, I'm kind of horny too, dude. Yeah, let's okay, let's do this. Yeah. And then it's like they, they bang and then they get back to doing what they were doing. Right, right back to productivity. And then on top of that, when two guys go on a date, do, do they have a share? They don't split the check. I mean, sorry, they don't like one guy doesn't pay, they split the check. Right. Yeah. So it's like you get the, you know, sexual gratitude you want, you want, you get the sexual urges done. You get to go back to work, no BS, no emotions, no headache. You see everything is split down the middle. It's no wonder these guys are killing it with all the money, bro. And guess what? They don't, they don't have a problem with sourcing because yeah, they, have, they don't waste no time sourcing. Because guys have to figure out how to source girls, how to get that constantly. The, the numbers pursuit game up. cost, yes, absolutely, and it's price, it's costly. Well, and uh, mad time gone. My best friend is gay, uh -huh. and I'm more familiar with the gay community than most people might assume. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, this and, is great. Perfect. Yeah, well, no, and it, it provided a lot of insight. So we yeah. go to gay clubs and and, and gay bars and whatever, and it, it, it all was fair and well. And what I was shocked is at how efficient. It was mm. like there, yeah. There's a little bit of a flirtation. Yeah. If a guy wants to meet another guy, but basically it's like, hey, do you want to go and let's let's go bang? And like, yeah. There's not this. I got to court her for three dates to get down <laughs> her pants. It's kind of that night you meet, you go and bang, and hey, that doesn't mean you're spoken for. There's no hemming and hawing. Where is yeah. this? It's like no three it, dates and all those other. Yeah. Yes. No. So there's the the ex expediency at which it got to. And then now what's a little bit rarer, and this is my buddy, he's older than me, and this is the stage he's at. He's like, well, I kind of like to find someone to settle down with. And the paradox of the irony is, dude, it's a bunch of guys. And even though you might have to be homosexual, they're still guys, and they still want to bang. And you could see it again where they do the sex frequently uh, frequency studies between gay couples, straight couples, and then lesbian couples. Mm -hmm. Women just do not have the sex drive. Men do whatever yep. your sexuality, and they have be. the highest uh, domestic abuse rates. But no one talks about. Well, that. we don't have to worry. That's not lesbians beat each other right. up. But it bit. was, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, no, and you're. It's not. That's not conspiracy. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's like. Hey, did you know the sky is blue? Yeah, like, yeah, wow. yeah, no, but like it, it's like because uh, I've mentioned it before, people are like, "Yo, that makes sense," but they thought I was crazy, and I was like, "No, man, no. there's a reason why they have so much money, mm -hmm. and it's because they don't deal with women. They don't get divorced, graped." You know what yep. I'm saying? They don't have to spend a lot of money on extravagant things. When they go on a date, they probably split it down the middle. It's not a big deal. They're and, probably both professionals. Yep. That's yep. another thing as well. Yep. 
So it's just uh, it's just like easier, man. Oh, here's another thing. Uh, this is my other theory, because you know, uh, people like, let's keep it real. Like a lot of girls will say, oh, I, I I'll date a uh, uh, like if you ask a girl, hey, will you date a guy that's like bi? They might say yeah to be politically correct, bro, but th- but they're not. And, yeah. and here's the other thing too. If I'm a guy and I go both ways, right? Hypothetically speaking, of course, that's only on Saturdays for you guys that are interested. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, oh, right there, right there first. Uh, you know, if I was to go both ways, whatever. Why would you pursue women when you oh, could yeah. just get it much easier by going on Grinder? Like, why would you deal with the BS <laughs> if you get the same sexual gratification yeah. from men as you do women? Why would you pursue women? You know, not to say that that I would do that, but you know what I'm saying per- personally. But like, you think about it, like. I don't think like any guy that makes that's like logical would not be by because it's like a waste of time to go after women when you have, you know, something much easier. Right. Humans are the path of least resistance. Right. So, OK, that conversation went uh, 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 all over the place. Uh, so we're going to transition back to regular scheduled programming. <laughs> <laughs> we got some chats super, super real quick. Yeah. Uh, OK, we got Ricky uh, 985 with the Canadian two dollars. Hi, Cappy. Here's some money for your bailout. Thank you. So, <laughs> thank you so bailout. much. OK, uh, Mo Mrizzle. Have you seen The Big Short? One of my favorite films for sure. Thank you, Mo Mrizzle. I haven't, but I want to see it. It's good. It's worth good. it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Read my book first. And we got okay. Ricky Webster. Uh, just showing an, uh, uh, love. Another legend with the legends. French toast props do. Thank you, Ricky. Shout I appreciate Ricky, man. that, man. Once again, brother. So uh, is Ricky modded up, by the way, Chris? Yeah, he is. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Thank you so much, Ricky. Um, we got Jacob S. with the $5 super chat. I listen to the Clary catalog or on Audible in the gym so I can... The ultimate mind slash body pump. <laughs> Give this man a dot in the mark. There you go. You, bro. Hey. Uh, Kevin C. Five dollars. I once walked the whole Mount Vernon trail in Washington D.C. while listening to Aaron Clary. Yeah, man. There I mean, go. I I tell everybody re- listen to or read Bachelor Pad Economics. It's a, a mandatory read for all you, young men. You will get your money back. Yeah. No matter which format you buy. Absolutely. You will get your money back. Um, and I almost like three bucks, you know what, what I'm saying? It's like, three bucks on it's like, Audible? It's like three or five bucks. Yeah. Oh, good Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting robbed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my nickel royalty per se. Actually, I pirated the book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got uh, Ryan Apollo with the 1999 Super Chat. This one is long overdue. Thanks for all of the great information. Closing rates on my dates are much higher now. Also, I would definitely recommend everyone go to go check out Aaron's books if you haven't already. Thank yes, you, man. Yes, do it. <laughs> I'm glad Dom, 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 Dom. we've been helping Aaron close his rates uh, down there in the great state of Texas. There you go. Uh, King Chris, $20. Aaron Clary is in the house. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Minimalism is great. Shout out to the Freshman fam, Myron Gaines, Freshman CEO, Aaron Poxon. Uh, hashtag do 100, 100 real quick. Oh, 100 real quick. We're multiplying, never, we're multiplying, never, never dividing, dividing, son. Hey, man. There thank you, you go, bro. King. Damn, Chris. son. Where'd you find Our this? <laughs> To him. Uh, I just gave Chris a soundboard, by the way, guys. So you, we're all fucked. Okay. Peter Z, followers. Uh, Aaron is my favorite minimalist Midwestern manly. I have read four of his books and changed states. Thanks to Reconnaissance Man. Uh, crunchitize me, Captain. <laughs> crunchitize? I don't know what that means. They might have heard Krishnatize? that. Crunchitize? They probably heard our, our, you know, our homosexual conversation oh, earlier. Right. Now they're hitting on you. So uh, I have no idea what they're talking about. Gordon W, $5. Any advice for 30 year old switching careers from warehouse work? To software engineering, also thoughts on Dave Ramsey, baby steps. Okay, well, hold that question. One. Hold that question. We will answer that at the end. That's a good one. If you guys have questions for Aaron, we will have a QA at the end. So, uh, Chris, can you make a note of that, please? Yeah. Uh, image 626109. Marin, you sure you don't swing the other way? Haha, <laughs> JK. Uh, only on Saturdays. Okay, <laughs> now stop trading. 360. Two dollars. Has the Carlson School ever contacted you, Kathy? <laughs> no, they have not yet. Uh, so. <clears throat> somebody put my name on the Carlson School of Management's Wikipedia site or entry saying I'm a notable alumni along with Tony Dungy and some other people I've never heard of. <laughs> and everyone's like, I can't believe you're on the and I hate the school. I mean like I hate my alma mater. It's yeah. it's a worthless school. Never never go there or any business <laughs> school. But the um because the Carlson School of Management and among other business schools uh, have wasted mine and millions of other people's young people's time. <laughs> uh I may have used my internet presence to maybe if you search YouTube, like, should I attend the Carlson School of Management? And my video is number one. And it is so nice having more pull on the internet. Like my SEO is better than the Carlson School of Management. There you go. And it's like, if I wanted to, I could probably end them. There you go. I probably could, but I have other things to do. (laughs) <laughs> all right so um aaron it's no uh but uh know, well, we have uh, another one i guess uh, hey rollo sabasi ask cabby about his quick collection <laughs> yeah. yo last night yo quick story guys last night we were in the car dropping um cappy home right Aaron clary 
And uh, he mentioned right before we stopped, he's like, yeah, guys, collect some coins. And we all stopped. We were like, bro, you collect coins? <laughs> What's next? Baseball cards? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, but it's, That's old school. And my sexuality was then called into question because <laughs> I, I bought old coins. Leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, man, that's hilarious. I see the logical connection to being a coin collector and being gay. Yes, yeah. that has, <laughs> makes complete sense. Yes. Oh, no, we're making, we're making fun, no, that was, yeah, that was great. But that's we did, uh, Aaron did give us a bunch of gems on, which we're going to talk about here on silvers and Aaron, on precious metals. Uh, Aaron Clary owns my prostate, five dollars. Aaron read all of your books. Great work. Thoughts on lawmakers making their move on crypto. Don't worry, I uh, we are going to talk about crypto on this show. No. Um, okay, so Aaron, it's no uh, secret that you are extremely uh, uh, how do I say knowledgeable about finances. Oh yeah, personal finances, investing, etc. Can you give us a quick overview? What what is money to you? Time. That's, okay. and it's not it's not <clears throat> it's not an opinion. Perfect. It's not, it doesn't change for any person. All your money, all, t all money is, is that you've transacted your time and converted it into a medium of exchange that you can go and pay other people to buy their time to do something for you. So we could say, for example, uh, this coffee mug, yep. um, it's the ceramic or the clay or whatever. Mm -hmm. There really is no such thing as I would say raw materials. Because a human had to go dig the clay, they had to fire it up, they had to spend time in it. So everything you see around us <clears throat> is composed of human time. Yep. All right. Exactly. And the, it, it, I'm sure everyone remembered 101 economics, where like if there was no money, you'd have to barter, and and it's the double coincidence of wants paradox. Like, well, it, you know, I make cups, and you do podcasts, but if I don't want podcasts, I want milk. Well, you and I cannot transact. So mm -hmm. money naturally forms in every economy. Even prisons, even communist countries, money, some form of money will form because it is just too costly to rely on a barter system. Mm -hmm. And so that's all money is, is you committed part of your time, presumably doing labor, although nowadays that's that's being changed to merely existing. Yep. Uh, where you 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 know, you've repaired somebody's car. They gave you one hundred dollars. Now that hundred dollars is a command or a, a, a call on other people's time yep. and it depends on what you need if you need coffee served well you pay the the barista a dollar tip and some unless fraction. it's tom he works for free yeah no, I'm just kidding. And then, yeah <laughs> <That's good. clears throat> or if if you need your heart repaired well that hundred dollars will buy five minutes of the heart surgeon who's going to patch you back up because his time or her time is a lot more valuable right and so that's a, a very vital thing to understand is that you got about 78 79 years on this planet if you're a guy 83 yeah. 84 if you're a girl and what are you going to do with that time and the number one thing going back to what you talk about fresh like early on yeah. make your time as valuable as possible mm -hmm. as quickly as possible right i'm even getting to the point where i'm advocating um <clears throat> if the kids are particularly smart or industrious try to skip high school Fine, go home school, do it all online. But while you're going to high school online, you're teaching yourself how to be a mechanic. You're teaching yourself code. You're learning accounting. Ideally, so that by the time you're 18, you could go to school online for college, have a CPA or get your accounting degree, get your engineering degree. And now you're four years ahead of the game and you don't have to stick around with college. And you got all that much more time. Uh, yeah. At the end, you know, it's funny. Uh, it's funny you said that because I see a lot of kids now <clears throat> that are 18 years old, 20 years old, mm -hmm. driving Lambos, Ferraris. I'm like, yo, what did they do? And I met some of them. And you know what? Instead of going to school, mm -hmm. they spent time learning how, learn how to trade, how to uh, set up e-commerce stores. And I'm like, damn, I went to school wasted all that time mm -hmm. when I could have just studied a, a, a path or niche, mm -hmm. and I'd be way better off. Because let's be honest here, once the money, you could get your time back, and at that point, you could do whatever you you want to do for the most right. part. So that's powerful, man. And if if you look at take a a rich person, or, you know some of those yachts over there are, are pretty nice. <clears throat> look at an estate. Look at a mansion. Look at a yacht. Look at a rich man or woman and all the stuff they own. It's not the stuff that that paid for it. That's other. Think of the human time that had to go into making that Ferrari, putting cre drilling the gas out to refine it, to ship it, to then pump it in the pumps. To it, there is so much so. A, a rich person, if you look at, if they were to display their wealth, which they typically don't, but <clears throat> think about all the human time that one person commanded because they put the effort and time to make their time, one hour of their time, incredibly valuable. Or they're an entrepreneur and they invested in the right thing, that type of stuff. Um, yes. But this is stuff, you know, if there's one message I could convey to people, this is stuff to do 
early. Don't wait till you're 60 or divorced or anything like that. Like it, it counts now, but if you can start early on. So the, the, the message to the younger men out there listening is, Oh yeah. <clears throat> Chase girls. You know, if you, if you're sitting on the toilet doing whatever you want, you know, Instagram or, or, you know, I'm not saying don't throw no lines in the water, but do not be spending five hours of your time going to a nightclub or going, going on mall. dates. Yeah. I mean, going to a mall, whatever. Up and down. Yeah. Don't, don't be Troy Francis walking around. Like, ah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <Shots fired. fired. laughs> oh man. Guys, oh. Myron, real quick. Yeah. Uh, Rolo's, uh, comment. We don't have to hear his comment. Do we? The, oh, oh. Hair? He brought up a very good point. Uh, what are the show and the sphere that provides you with this kind of variety of value? Get those likes up. Guys, thank you, Rolo fucking Tomasi, man. <laughs> guys, we got 740 <laughs> live viewers, only 220 likes. Come on, guys. guys. Like the video, man. I don't want to stop the show. I hate doing it. And yes. uh, who wants to be a millionaire song really sucks and it's annoying. And it's loud as hell for us on these headphones. Yes. So, guys, like the video right now. Please give us that like. Um, go ahead. Uh, also, we have in the chat, chat Mobile Nation. Do you know who that is? No. It's, it's a big uh, YouTube channel. He says, uh, get it, do ADA, ADA, American Dental Association. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what dentists that is. make money. Dentists are that good. Is. Uh, we'll hit some of these real quick. Non stop Dre 360, $2. When are you starting Operation Evil Cappy? Uh, that's going to start probably after I move into my new house and get settled over there. Okay. Um, yeah, and Operation Evil, people didn't know. I most of my, well, not most, all my products are about the truth. Go to the school for the right thing. Spend less than you make. Don't get no girl pregnant. Don't don't commit no crime. And and all I've gotten, or there's a housing crisis coming, or there's a don't major in worthless stuff. And all I've gotten is flack and guff and called names and a mean uh, person. You're racist you're or sexist, right? And so I've I figured, okay, I'm catching all this flack, and then I look at Oprah. You're beautiful, yeah, and amazing, and biggest, and you're just. Perfect because you were born with a VJJ <laughs> and she got more money than me, like a lot more money than me. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, how do I get that money? And I figured it out. You sell lies. Yeah. And so Operation Facts, Evil. I've been saying that for a minute. <laughs> right. So Operation Evil is um, it's not solely regulated towards women or relegated towards women. Uh, they are the largest target market because they'll believe what they want to believe and they'll pay a price for it. Yeah. But I have a sweet of services and products in mind, of which I'm not mentioning any, where I'm going to sell it uh, under a false name. Okay. Uh, where Perfect. they're going to think I'm a, a girl and I'm empowered and whatever. There you go. And I'm going to take back all the money they voted away from me. Hey! And that's basically. Oh. I love it. <laughs> the diabolical plan. So operation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got Rich fucking Cooper in oh, the house. Hey! Oh my God. <laughs> Entrepreneurs in cars, twenty Canadian dollars. Shout out to Aaron Clary, your bundle of sticks. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, at least oh, we're man. a warm bundle of sticks because we're in what was it, eighty four? Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Where, where's Rich? Oh, uh, he's freezing his ass off. You know, you know, how, you know how cold it is in Canada. They have oh, to cool. measure it in Celsius. That's how cold it is. In Jeez, yeah. just fire! Oh man! Oh man! That's hilarious. Oh, man. Uh, we got Juan, the Aztec Patriarch, two dollars. Uh, saludos, Chaparito. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Uh, we got Ricky Webster. Aaron, I just bought your book off Amazon. French toast oh, props. Oh, what's, what's, Hey, French, what's French toast pops. Yeah. Honestly, bro. Okay. Down Ricky, Marco, Marco. what is French toast? No, it's because Kevin Samuels Kevin says Samuels? wine the French yeah. toast. Yeah, um, that's Samuels. what he's saying. That. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All okay. this time you've been agreeing, you don't even really. Know. Oh, oh yeah. French, <laughs> French, I'm gonna get French toast. He had no idea where it was. Yeah, no I idea. Ate some, though, wait, bro. wait, wait. Kevin Samuels never knew what French toast was. No, no he no, says no. wine the French toast to keep it YouTube friendly. Yeah. Oh, French. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When the girls say, "Uh, I'm 41 years old and I got five kids, uh, but I want a guy that makes uh, $500,000 a year," he'd be like, "What? What? The French toast? Are you stupid?" Yeah. There you go. So yeah. uh, So that's hilarious. Okay. uh, Fresh just got exposed. Eduardo (laughs) uh, Arozema. Knowledge slash experience stays. Money comes and goes, but time goes and you don't get it back. Bam. Okay. Well said. Um, Whoa. Clarion High Definition. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Aaron Clarion, 1080p, baby. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Okay. Uh, Mike Arthur, five dollars super check. Can you guys have Aaron on the podcast more often? Can't believe my three favorite YouTubers are in the same room at once. Y'all Boom. rock. I would try, but Aaron actually doesn't like us, guys. He doesn't. I, 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 aside from the coin incident, <laughs> I, 
I, I, I like you guys. And if I do, and I, I, I'll have no problem coming back, but I am not renting a car. I'm taking that train <laughs> and I'm not leaving Miami. I'm not visiting any friend. I told all my buddies on the north side of the state. I'm like, look, I'm flying into Orlando next time. I'm not driving out of it. So I, I will fly here and take the train and. You'll yeah. actually have to hang out with us then. Wait. We just hung out last night. What are we going to do tonight? Yo, I, I offered him pizza. Gonna, gonna he was like, I don't like you that much. But <laughs> yeah, on camera, he agreed. You know what? Clip that. Clip that. He said yeah. he likes us. Yeah. Clip it. Yeah, please. we do got to say that. That's actually rare. <laughs> That's rare, man. Uh, okay, we got Link in the house. Oh, man. Shout out to the best of the best, fresh and fit, and Chris. Yep. And for your guests, what age did he decide this was the career for him? Mm. We will answer that, Link. Don't worry. We will get right back to that. We got a couple of questions. Chris will save it. And then uh, Mo Rizzle. 199 ADA is Cardano number three cryptocurrency. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, anything else? No, we're good. All right. Cool, guys. And guys, by the way, Eric Claire's website, Asshole Consulting, if you need some advice from an asshole. Uh, <laughs> Impressive. And um, okay. So um, we talked about money. What are your views on women, feminism, and the dating marketplace? Uh oh. Uh, there, those here are we three go. things. Women, I love women. Mm -hmm. Show me where there are any. Um, but no, I. I, I I like women. I like femininity. I like mm -hmm. females. I like big boobs, long hair, tight asses, and long legs. I like having sex with women. I like dancing with women. I like flirting with women. I Every guy, un unless you happen to be gay, of course, <clears throat> likes women. I don't think there's anything. Feminism is a cancer on society mm -hmm. uh, that it no longer represents what original noble aims it might have had about uh, achieving a parity and equality uh, with voting rights and property ownership and things like that back mm -hmm. literally over 100 years ago <clears throat> uh and now it is it's just communism using hiding behind vagina mm. that's really what it is is it, it it's not it's not it's <laughs> I not, like that it's not complicated it's and this is why i don't get too excited about politics because it's very simply there's a group of people that want your stuff and there's a group of people that don't want these people to take their stuff and the group of people that want your stuff will come up with a whole potpourri of excuses and reasons there were uh, democrats well, yeah, but but it, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's beyond that. It's you know, I would say the philosophy of communism, the philosophy of socialism. Mm -hmm. If you read any Noam Chomsky or Foucault or um, or any at Marx, you know, the, it's a book this thick. Das Kapital, basically, why I don't want to work for a living, and other people should give me their money. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you can see this in academia, where most of it. Uh, in the social sciences and the liberal arts is merely a rationalization to taking other people's money. Say, why am I entitled to your wealth? And feminism just happens that flavor is because I'm a woman <clears throat> and I'm oppressed and we could talk victimhood politics and all that as well. But that's all all feminism is, is, mm. is really that. Now, then there's also the, because it has a victim oppressor dynamic to it, obviously because the binary nature roughly of the entire population if you're a female and you're oppressed, well, who's doing the oppressing? Men. Yep. And so now men are unconscious, institutional sexism and, and all this. And like, you're like, I've never done a thing. Yeah. You know, if anything, I've told women to major in STEM and actually close the wage gap. <laughs> um, but fe feminism is just a lie. It's it's all it is is Marxism. And I'd say about the only thing I could say beyond its political intentions or its economic intentions is that it has ruined coming up on three full generations of women, mm. uh, starting with the boomers, Gen X women, my generation. Um, there are a lot of spinsters, <laughs> a lot of spin. Well, they are. <clears throat> uh, we have this is true. Sex yeah. in the city lied. Yeah, they, they lied well, to them, they man. Lied to, but you know who made they made a lot of money on sex in the city. They did. I, I want me them Oprah bucks. Exactly. I want me them Oprah bucks. But uh, but it now and I'm looking at it and they just kept turning it up and up and up. And now you got the millennial girls and now Gen Z girls. Mm. They're really they're not. And Rolo talked about this last night where there was that uh, report where roughly half the women are expected to essentially be barren and unmarried between the ages of 18 and 45 or whatever. Um, you are going to that that has destroyed young women's lives. And I know I know women scream that they don't need men and that their career is more important and that their politics or their ideology and this and that and you don't put a man you can't rely on a man and it's like yeah you know what have fun crying yourself to sleep at night i mean to yeah. to give nature and, and biology the bird like saying oh yeah you're two million years well screw you this 
pissed off harpy boomer feminist over here 50 years ago said that I don't need it. Like, and, and you can see it there. Do you guys remember the chart Rolo had where it showed uh, women on antidepressants by yeah, age? Yes, it's been going up, yes. I mean, it's it's like, okay, beat your chest, say you, you know, you're a feminist, and that's what your value is. Uh, but deep down inside, you're probably there's a huge part of your your hind brain that is screaming and crying in pain because you didn't find a guy, you didn't fall in love, you didn't have kids. And if you did, you probably divorced the guy and you didn't even raise your effing children because you had to get back to a career and you couldn't wait to outsource them to the public schools or, or daycare. Bam. So that has destroyed three generations now of not just women, I would say families as well. And that, so we did women, feminism, and then yep. And then next is going to be Dave. But before we hit that, guys, first yep. of all, that rant was epic. That was fire. Yep. Uh, so, real quick, guys, today's episode was sponsored by Let's Get, Get Checked. Checked. And uh, Chris, can you throw the camera on fresh real quick Boom. as we uh, struggle through this pitch? <laughs> okay, guys, okay. here's a stat. Did you know, right, that healthy, healthy sperm counts have dropped by 50% in the last 40 years? Hormonal imbalances are a thing now, okay? A lot of you guys are becoming soy boys, and you need to get your testosterone up and check it, okay? Also... Do you know that um, one in four men over 30 are low in testosterone and have hormonal imbalances? Symptoms of hormonal imbalances may include collecting coins, being <laughs> angry all the time, <laughs> 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 uh, low energy or fatigue, erectile dysfunction, low sex drive, anxiety, and brain fog. Guys, we're, we got the solution. I'd like to introduce you guys to our today's video. Let's yes. get checked where you basically can get checked and make sure that you're not beta and that you're not low testosterone. Okay. 100%. Um, and also to add, a, add to that as well, right, guys, for example, there's four e easy steps here, right? First thing is, once you get your uh, kit, it's the de uh, delivery to you. Once you get, you get it delivered to you, you get the capsules here. And in the capsules, you do your, your sampling. and you, Collect and your, your sample. Um, yep. You give them your, your pee sample, of course, right? You send it back to them uh, directly. Not the other sample, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then once you send it back, you get your results. And from there, you know your levels. And from there, you do a consult with someone over the phone. And they can tell you, for example, okay, you know what? You need more testosterone or you don't. At that point, guys, you know what you're dealing with and you can work the suit. Because guess what? If you have low, low T levels, trust me when they say, in the bedroom, you're going to have some trouble. So there you go. Yeah, man. And shout out to Let's Get Check for sponsoring this podcast. We appreciate yes. it, guys. I hope we did okay. There you We're go. We're probably going to lose our sponsorship <laughs> now. But anyway, <laughs> back to regularly scheduled programming. There you go. <laughs> we got some chats. Oh, we we got go. some super chats. All right. Uh, we got Ryan Acevedo with the final super chat. The college degree is dead. Worked in higher education for two years. It's bro it's a broken system that is too expensive. Silly hoops to jump for young kids. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. And we're going to talk about college here in a second uh, right after the dating. CJ, $2. What country do you think is best to retire in? We will get there as well. That's an excellent question. Chris, can you save that one too? Uh, Kevin Francis, 499 Super Chat. I use my GI Bill to major in Black Studies and Creative Writing at Columbia. <laughs> Not getting a trade. Here's your money, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> did he did he actually spend his GI Bill on that, or is he just joking? I, I he might be joking. He might be Oh God, I hope he's joking. Yeah. <laughs> he joking. <laughs> Aaron's economic wisdom taught me the only way, uh, ring to invest in a woman is a Nuva ring. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hire Nico with the five dollars super chat. There you go. With the zinga. Uh, anything else? Uh, okay, Manny Singh. Ask any woman uh, if she'd rather have her dream job or her dream spouse slash family. More often than not, she wants the latter. That's uh, yeah, man. If she's yeah. drunk and being honest, uh, the sample gets you 18 years yeah, of child support. Hey, yeah, facts. Oh, Shout out to Rolo Tomasi, man. Oh, man. Uh, Rolo, where you at, man? I don't, we, you, Rolo, why are you us? here? Why aren't you here with us, bro? Oh, you know what? He wants the food. Uh, Ste state bites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He wants to go eat. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, any, anything else? No, we're good. We're, we're caught up. Okay. So uh, give us your views on uh, dating. The dating. Uh, okay. It's, it's uh, uh, how can I put it? It's a minefield. Mm -hmm. It's. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and that was the, the book of numbers. I mean, I knew it was bad 20 years ago, 25 years ago when I was playing the field and, and out there uh, dancing and all that. And then I rely on a lot of my clients and friends of mine who are still dating. And then, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, boy, it, it, it's it's even getting worse. And you hear stories and you got to be intellectually honest. Well, is that an anecdote? Is it really that bad? And then I went and I started doing the research for the book of numbers. And the one thing that just really opened my eyes to realize how bad it was is when I went through 900 dating profiles to find out what percent of the women had major deal breakers. And I came up with eight major deal breakers. We're talking things about like, uh, oh, let's do it. Like uh, STDs, um, 
leftist uh, politics, um, worthless degrees. Um, well, oh, obesity, the obvious one that's immediately oh, yeah, accessible. Yeah. yeah. And so you're just whittling down and destroying <laughs> the thing. I mean, so it ended up being like 2.7% out of the 900 profiles. I think I found, was it 50, if 50 at all, uh, whatever 2.7% of 900 was. And going through, and it was random. It wasn't like I was searching anything. I, the only thing I did was I did rural, uh, city, and suburbs uh, in three different towns, 100 apiece. So I got 900 to get a good statistical sampling. Yeah. And I was just, I'm not kidding. I was depressed where I'm like, they're fat. <laughs> they're ugly. Yeah. They're bitchy. Yep. They don't, they are, they are not, and I'm not trying to say this for shtick. They don't want a guy. They really just want to go there, stand on their soapbox, and hope some you know, Chris Pratt looking guy comes walking in with his millions of and they are so far removed and so delusional from they don't even consider that there's another party involved called the guy. Like, for example, I try to sell you on the merits of buying collectible coins. Yes. And you immediately <laughs> question my my masculinity. I got <laughs> now I have to say, okay, you know, Myron ain't gonna buy these coins. I better sell them on the merits. I'm like, well, it's not really a, a statement of homosexuality. Uh, you invest in silver and diversify, and there's a fun collectible aspect to them. But I gotta figure I gotta account for the fact I gotta convince a separate human being brain yeah, to yeah. willingly do it on his own. Yeah. Girls, the impression I got is that girls really think it's a shopping store. You go to the boyfriend <laughs> store, the husband store, and I pick out this, and then I go. <laughs> so this disconnect, this inability to be, I don't know if it's apathetic or sympathetic, but be aware. It's its the epitome of solipsism, where mm -hmm. you're the only sentient entity that exists. Yep. And absolutely. everything yep. else is a video game or an NPC. And that was the most prominent thing and the most depressing thing I found when I did this 900 profile survey. And so looking at that, I'm like, oh my gosh, it is as bad as all my friends and agents in the fields and clients are telling me. And then the numbers just got worse the more I looked into different things and, and stuff like that. And so my opinion of the dating market and the dating scene right now is, let's be very careful, women don't need you, and for the most part, they don't want you. Yeah. And they only want... And this is where you're, where I want you to write the Myron addendum in a later edition for the book. And yeah. I think your your research and, and your numbers are very on the vanguard of things. Oh, yeah. I try. Unless you are indeed a top alpha type of male. Yeah. Uh, these girls have no interest in you. Yep. And because they can get a sampling, they can share an alpha instead of have their own beta. Mm -hmm. Um, and on top of it, you're also competing against their career yep. and, and themselves and their politics and other agency point and purpose in life reasons they've been given to live by, by what they've been told. And then also they got the government to bail them out as a lender of last resorts of sorts Facts. where, they, where they don't need, they really don't need you and the program not to want you. And unless you are the perfect man that they were told that they are entitled to, they have no interest. And six four five, Chad, nice teeth. Yeah. Muscular. Right. Six six six. Um, whatever. I I mean, it's <laughs> well, women. I'll tell you this, uh, Aaron. Like when we bring women on on our late night podcast, one of the questions we like to ask is, "Well, what do you want in a guy?" And man, it's a it's amazing. I think one woman has described a guy that is not in the top three or five percent. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's it's uh, and then it what we do is so we tell them we ask them what do you want. Then we ask them what percentage of men do you think actually meet these requirements? And it's crazy to see the disconnect. They're thinking like. One girl said, "Uh, sixty-five percent of guys are six foot five. Yeah, and I was like, "What? No. Like, stupid." She also <laughs> like, said, "Her ideal guy is six inches, five feet." You're talking less than one percent of the population. <laughs> she right said now. that was like every guy. <laughs> Hilarious, man. So the Delusional. delusion is real. Like yeah. the with the, the yeah. more I've like actually talked women and actually ask them these questions, I'm like, "Wow, this is why they yeah. stay single." And yeah. you know what's shocking? I think it. We know this right up here but i still can't believe it like yeah. how disconnect like it can't be they can't be that dumb they can't be this untethered from reality exactly like, like stupid the the income requirements uh roughly women need not want need a guy to make about 65 grand a year okay yep. and then you look at the bell distribution curve of single men not married men single men 
And it's only something like 15% of men make that. And especially if you're a younger guy, when you typically would be considered getting married, you're even making less than that. Yeah. So if you're talking men between 18 and 45, you're making less on average than the 46 to retired or, or dead. Um, and so this, this delusion, this disconnect, which, which I still have a hard time believing, but it's real. Uh, this has rendered the dating market, I, I would say, almost a non-starter. And unless you're going to put the time and effort into becoming a true top dog alpha, yeah. and I cannot emphasize You must this, become high uh, value. I, I cannot emphasize this enough. You have to do that for yourself. You cannot yeah, do it for women. Yes. Because if you do it for women, you will not be able, you will not know why or be able to engage or, or n deal with these girls. You have to do it for yourself. So whether you get the girl or not, whether you save the princess or not, you're making your six figs or whatever you want to make. You have no debt. You're in good physical shape, not just to look sexy, but you're actually also healthy. You have good, you know, your heart's in good condition. You don't have diabetes and stuff like that. And also psychologically accomplished where it's like, okay, who am I? What do I want to do? And that's a long journey. Like yeah. I get these kids 20 years old. What should I major in? I'm like, well, kid, I guess you better go research and water in the desert <laughs> some, some bit. But that answer doesn't, you don't go to the purpose and reason store, buy your purpose and reason. Oh, I will become a dentist or coin collector. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you, and that's, that is more important to achieve. Uh, and then if you happen to be a high value alpha, okay, now you're in the dating market. Yeah. But that says nothing about marriage or our, uh, LTRs or anything like that, yep. which is a whole different ball of wax. Uh, yeah. Man, that, that was, that was, that was powerful. Damn, son, that was powerful, where'd man. you find this? I didn't want to interrupt. And guys, by the way, uh, the I got some messages about the Let's Get Checked. The link is, is below, guys. Click the link if you guys want to get the, the kit to test out your testosterone. Yes. But, uh, um, okay, um, so let's transition over. Oh, super chats, sorry. Oh, Super Chats. Okay, <laughs> not stop trade, $362. Girls nowadays are... Uh, for, what's that say? For mom, for mommies, okay, for mommies. and plant moms. LOL. Thank you for that, nonstop Dre. Uh, again, nonstop Dre. I've sent Cappy a lot of real profiles near me. <laughs> there you go. Yes, yeah. He's one of my one of the guys who will send me like, look at this. I'm like, I uh, <laughs> can't believe <laughs> we got Tony Ocasio in the house. Ten dollars super chat. Hey, fresh and fit. In your opinion, do you think in between the next two and a half, two two to five years, monogamous relationships between older women and younger guys will still be the norm? Uh, no, man. I don't. It, yeah. it won't. It will definitely not be. We can answer that one right yep, here. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, what else? Um, anything else? We are good to go. All right. Cool. So cool. Um, let's go over to money. Yeah. All right. So uh, what are your thoughts on cryptocurrency? Uh, I, I, like I know it. John's watching. Go ahead and watch yeah. this. Like, oh! Shots uh, MLD. I, I like it. Yeah. Um, the problem is it's not a known quantity or known entity just yet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not widely accepted. Uh and I'm, I'm kind of, it's not that I'm middle of the road. I get, I think I just kind of as, assess it correctly. I think it's a great vehicle to um, be able to uh, get your wealth out of an oppressive country, an oppressive yeah. state. Yeah, that's and actually I a good think, way to think And of that's it. that, if you ever look at when it was Vietnam and India started putting capital controls on their citizens, what you could and could not <clears throat> take out of the country in terms of gold and all that. Well, once you start limiting what people can remove from the country, that is technically yours. They're like, do I really own this? And so, yep. uh, and then you get Biden elected and a, also money printer Gober when you print off, you know, you quadruple. Oh the money yeah, supply. seriously. So <laughs> kind of like, huh? And, and there's an element of uh, sensationalism to it. It's popular. It's an interesting topic. So there's always going to be these people that would, would buy just out of curiosity or maybe, but I'm thinking there's increasingly more and more smart money going into it. Yeah. Because they fear communists taking their their stuff and, and taking like I need to be able to outsource my my wealth somehow get it past borders in case they take my home they implement eighty percent tax rates so I think that is what you're starting to see is a couple people not using it as a currency but an insurance policy mm -hmm. uh, very much like silver or gold or other precious metals where it's like well okay if the economy goes to shit and we're in a post you know and the dollar loses value or the yen loses value or the euro loses value we're going to go back to the old school currencies uh like that so there's fear is essentially uh uh what's driving cryptocurrencies i would say now <clears throat> and i would also say that cryptocurrency is probably more legitimate than a lot of people think my main complaint about them is that you could create one tomorrow. And I don't know how many there are now. There's like two or 3,000 of them. Um, but if you think about not just the US dollar, but yen, yuan, uh, pesos, taking a currency, 
the U.S. banking system, like, do you guys have any cash on you right now? No. I don't. None. I gave it to the homeless last night. Did you give it to the homeless guy last night? You mean yeah. Rolo? That's <laughs> 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 oh, Long <laughs> Rolo Tomasi's in Wait, the building, by the way, guys. Oh, he's, here. Yeah, he's, he's right here. Yeah. Well, he's, he's not homeless. Is he staying with you tonight? <laughs> right, man. I, my home is open to all. Oh, he got oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, right look in the back. That. Look at that. Yeah. You know, what's up to the people? Rolo, How many dicks did you uh, suck to get that? Oh, 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 here we go. That's a lot of penis. That's a lot of penis. Did you brush your teeth? Shots fired. Oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're oh, talking uh, about crypto. Let me let crypto, me point, oh, yeah. <laughs> let me let me point out something of a cryptocurrency that hopefully and this this helps people understand cryptocurrency. Yeah. We don't really fully understand it. None of us really have cash anymore. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and we have dollars, and they're created and stored digitally. And and when I when I take say my PayPal account, mm -hmm. and I transfer two thousand dollars from my PayPal account to my bank account. All that really is, you know, there's not 2,000 physical dollars being transferred. All that is is an accounting, a ledger where PayPal says, okay, bank, we're going to give you 2,000 of Aaron's money. Bank acknowledges, okay, we have 2,000 of your money. And then my PayPal balance goes down by 2,000. My bank account goes up by 2,000. <clears> and what you find out is that currency, especially today with, with uh, digital and internet uh, and electronic technology, it's really just a large accounting system of who transferred what to who? Yep. All right. Yep. That's it. Very little hard cash. And yep. if you look at the probably multi-trillion dollar infrastructure that goes into that, think about what goes into ensuring that to the penny, although there might be some loss, that your, your bank account balance and that the super chats we get over here go into your account and that it, it's all square and kosher, that requires... <clears throat> trillions in labor in terms of accountants over time yep. um auditors banks have to be set up to store and say you have to have a physical bank now you have to have a physical location investment banks, fdic pay FDI, them you insurance. gotta pay them clearing houses yeah uh it's a lot and you got tills i mean you know i feel you gotta bad pay the fbi to go after the bank robbers right well yeah I, I feel bad for these poor kids that gotta like actually do cash it's like what who is accepting cash anymore <laughs> well rollo does obviously still well use yeah cash. but that's for the <laughs> tricks behind the dumpster but <laughs> the... <laughs> anyway what cryptocurrency does is it's a complete and total accounting ledger mm -hmm. that does not require banks or uh, now it still requires exchanges, but it does require banks. It doesn't require a central bank. It doesn't require a printing press. And you don't have to do any debits and credits and accounts to keep because it's all taken care of by that blockchain technology. And if we can get to that level where we all, for whatever reason, saying kumbaya in the world, and we said, this is, we're going to settle on Ethereum or we're going to settle on, on Bitcoin, that would eliminate a lot of uh, what I would say by today's technological standards is, is dead weight in the economy and we could you know you don't need you don't need 80 percent of your accounts anymore yep. you know well you might need it for balance sheets for for your own anal uh, analytical purposes uh but that is the real value of a cryptocurrency is that yeah. we have one ledger we all agree we don't have to sit here and count pennies in a till uh and, and there's drawbacks to it too it could be easily controlled by a government or a dictator or a global government or stuff like that but there is some genuine technological and i would also say economic merit to cryptocurrencies if they're legit uh but we're so early i know cryptocurrency has been around what nine years eight years it's been a while it's been a while but yeah. we're still in an embryonic stage uh, of figuring it out so i uh so i with it and it shows in its volatility i'm not uh i, I don't endorse like saying people should buy crypto now but I do take the same approach I do with silver. It's like yeah. part of your investment portfolio should include some crypto, right? Uh, along with silver and gold, which is not gay. Yeah, uh, so, and we're oh, go ahead, go ahead. So, do you have some as well? Yeah, okay, you have some crypto. Yeah. Uh, do you wanna? Do you know? Okay, so I bought at eight hundred. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Keeping it for then, a minute. Then it went. Then it went down, and I started taking payments at Asshole Consulting in crypto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it was down to like. 50 or 35 bucks 
And so I, I, I started bringing some in and then I like everyone else. I, uh, okay, I'm not going to bother with that anymore. And then all of a sudden it shot up to 20,000 at one time. Now it's up to 40. Yeah. So I have like, you know, uh, two thirds of a crypto cause I sold it at 14,000 to buy some land so I could build my house. Boom. But, but yeah, it was, it was like, I picked it up for a song and now it's, you know, what, what is it? 40, 50,000. It's like today? about 50,000. Is it 50,000? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you got off rocky, not lucky, yeah, man. Late, uh, awesome. High forties. I'll look at it right now. That's exactly awesome, what man. it is. Oh, um, yeah, what's well, that? We got some chats. Okay, yeah. let's hit them real quick. Uh, there's certain place, <laughs> there are certain places I call honey traps. They include dating apps and dance clubs, places where that bait guys into giving out one way attention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, ben Jones, five dollars. Everyone give Cappy the same super chat love you gave Rolo. Maybe he'll move to Miami instead of North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Here you go. Uh, looking forward to uh, Smokehouse with the 499 Super Chat. Thank you so much. Looking forward to reading Reconnaissance Man and Black uh, Black Man's Guide Out of Poverty. By the way, my dad has made money from coins. Keep up the good work, fellas. Thank, Thank you, you Smokehouse. Uh, uh, Robbie, Robbie, Robbie Lee, uh Aaron, Boss, Clary in the building with the Fresh and Fit crew. When are we going to see Rolo, Clary, Rich, Ryan, and Emily uh, and, and MLD strolling through Miami with y'all? Don't worry. Hopefully this year. And yep. we got 1,000 live viewers, by the way, guys. Right. Hey, there you go. Okay. Down the muscle, so you guys muscle. actually do like Aaron. Like the video, guys. I really don't want to stop this because we're on a roll yeah. here. A lot of value getting get thrown value. out. Uh, Down the Marco. Hey, Cappy. Thanks for all your books. They're awesome. Also, how do I get the <laughs> girls? Please press the Don the Marco button. Hashtag Fresh and Fit Fan for life. There you go. Oh, where do I? This one right here. I and he hit the lie detector button at the same time. <laughs> uh, so uh, we get we got Fred Friedman so well 499. I read an article by this economist called Krugman. He was brilliant in his wealth tax and retroactive tax arguments. Has Clary read Krugman? Uh, we will get to that. We got Link. Um, save the princess now. You're talking my language, Cappy. LOL, fresh and fit. I missed the high value academy, but I was really interested. In your financial part of the course, is there any way to pay to have the course access to that now? Uh, let a fresh dude, yeah, let fresh. Just send me a fresh. DM, we can go from send, there. Also, we're actually gonna have a Zoom call with Cappy right after Link this. Link just upgraded his Patreon, so he's like there now. Oh, so. welcome, dude. Welcome yeah, to the welcome, fam. Link. We appreciate it. Welcome Thank to all you, the new patrons that are bro. coming, man. Thank you for your patronage. patronage. Okay, Andy on the block, Canadian, uh, two dollars. I tell people into DCA, into BTC, and ETH to start. Absolutely, that's what I tell people too. Kevin Francis, four nine nine super chat. Now, yeah, I actually got those degrees and legit <laughs> almost got a French toast PhD. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, Angry Bosch, five dollars. Peace and love, crew. Thank you, you Angry go. Bosch. Um, and yeah, guys, for the people in the High Value Academy, we are going to have Aaron Clary. Uh, in a Zoom call, we'll probably go for about eh, 30, 45 minutes yeah, or so. 10 minutes. Uh, we we got to eat. My stomach is growling. Rolo's yeah. here. And uh, yeah, we're going to just go. Yeah, eat. you got to get breakfast. Yeah, I got to get. Yeah, yeah, I woke up. Yeah. Yo, he was like, yo, yo, real talk, right? Just a quick story. Uh, so Eric, Eric is downstairs, right? Close me. I'm like, yo, you going to, to the studio? He was like, yeah, but is, is Myron awake? Is Myron, is Myron there? I was like, oh, he's probably sleeping. He's like, sleeping? Is, is he really a vampire? <laughs> Come downstairs, right? Sees Myron and says, good morning. I'm like, bro, six, six feet. I work the night shift. I know what it's like. Oh, you know, man. That was funny. Well, the people, I got receipts. People saw me yesterday. I was testing out some new stuff on StreamYard. They saw me like, oh, these guys really don't sleep at 6 a.m. Yeah. No, he dude, he works so ungodly hours, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's thank insane. you so much, uh, guys. I appreciate the support. Because we yeah. want to give you guys the best goddamn show. Yep. We just got new equipment that just came in now. We ain't messing around out here. And guys, wait till you see Monday who's going to be here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be big. It's I don't even big. know who's going to be here Monday. So Wait, I'm, I'm what are you not me. They'll never huh? know. What, what <laughs> I'm leaving mean? Friday. Damn it. Okay, cool. Well, but we're here for another show. Yeah. On tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. We're going to kidnap Aaron and Rolo and make them stay longer. Don't yep, worry, guys. There you go. Right, we got the black bags ready. All right. Watch uh, watch video with the $10 super chat. Glad you guys got Aaron uh, Clarion here. Big fan. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, guys, fans. As much as I might like make jokes about, you know, coins or whatever. Yeah. Let me tell you guys, son, I am a fan. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, I, I read Bachelor Pad Economics uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. Uh, I thought it was a phenomenal book. Uh, the breakdown on time that you have, because that breakdown he gave you guys, that's also in the book as far as like yeah. what money is. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I advise every young guy to read two books. Uh, the Rational Mail and Bachelor Pad Economics. Understand women, understand money. Boom. That's going to give you a great foundation for the rest of your life. Uh, okay, what else? Are we good? Here we go. All right. Um, so we talked about cryptocurrency. Let's uh, transition over to precious metals. 
Silver. <laughs> you know, that's not a Why Batman? Why Batman? Why Batman? <laughs> See, Aaron's old enough to know where that came from. Uh, <laughs> uh, you shots fired, man. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, can you tell us a little bit about um, collecting coins, silver, uh, gold, uh, metals in general? Right. There's, yes. there's two general ways, the, the more practical way for most people tuning in would be to get a position in precious metals. Mm -hmm. And the reason is similar to cryptocurrency, or at least why I say you should have some cryptocurrency is because you want to hedge against an inflating dollar or inflating currency, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and the logic behind it is for all of human existence until we had fiat currency that precious metals, copper, gold, uh, iron even at one time, uh, and silver, and it ended up becoming default gold and silver were, and, and copper were our uh, basic uh, units of currency. If the fiat currency collapses, uh, which there's an incredible track record of that happening because they always print off more money. Zimbabwe did it recently, Venezuela. They think it's not going to happen to them. I don't know why, but <laughs> usually the fiat currencies will collapse or they'll be hyperinflated away. And to maintain your purchasing power, to maintain the time that you gave up sacrifice to somebody else for labor mm -hmm. to maintain its purchasing power you have to invest in in different things and normally when you invest like say you buy a house that will naturally inflate with inflation over time it could go up and down but it will generally keep up with inflation mm -hmm. investing in um stocks yep. you know, will also generally keep up with inflation historically speaking anyway uh, but if you wanted something that was liquid uh and an actual currency precious metals is another option that you might want to consider. They don't pay dividends. They don't pay interest. So some people argue you should invest in bonds or stocks and, yeah, and or real estate yeah. investment trusts. And that's certainly true. But <clears throat> the, the other thing that precious metals have is that in a truly post-apocalyptic world, they're going to have their value again. Now, bullets will have more value to begin with. <laughs> of course. Uh, but when things settle down and there's a, there, you're going to go back to silver and gold. And so for that, you know, shit hits the fan scenario, I recommend people have precious metals. There, how much? I always recommend people have uh, 200 ounces of silver per mm -hmm. person. Some people like gold. I don't like gold because it's too valuable. Like you're not, it's not that divisible. It won't be that practical of a currency. Uh, I also recommend junk silver, where you go get a bunch of old uh, pre-64 coins in the United States that have some amount of silver in them, uh, and they're not as as nice or as large as the one ounce uh, American silver eagle coins. That'd be more divisible. And I even recommend if you have kids or if you're really bored, grab a bag of pennies from your local bank, spill it out on the table, say, kid, put all the 1982 and later pennies over here, put all the 81 and before pennies over there. And now you got copper. Bam. And I think that would be a very game changer yeah, right there. Right. And so the gym right there, guys. Yeah. And, and what's great about that is when you get older and you're the grandfather. Mm -hmm. They'll come up and tell their kids, like, yeah, you know what your grandfather made me do? No, he came in with a thousand pennies and made me sort it out. And then you have a story to tell as well as that. Then when it comes, the second reason you might want to consider collecting coins, that's just for the hobby-like aspect. Because like cards or stamps, some coins have mint errors or are rarer than others. And you can buy them for uh, uh, more than just their uh, their silver value or their, their precious metal value. It's more for the collector value. And, and most people find it a boring hobby. I enjoyed it as a kid, and so I have quite a... In, impressive coin collection uh but that that's just for a hobby that serves no economic or financial purpose uh, you know beyond okay. the fun cool fair enough man no uh because i i had never and guys i'm seriously considering getting uh precious metals now because i was like i knew about it but i didn't know too much and then uh aaron schooled me yesterday mm -hmm. so i'm like all right i guess i gotta get 200 ounces of silver well and, and, and keep in um, mind that another fun thing to do is sometimes jewelry works well uh, a lot of guys will wear their their silver or their gold um, you know, people can steal it, obviously, but yeah. that's another thing. Like, you know, if you want to get a, a nice gold watch or a nice silver watch and, you know, something that's practical beyond just because just silver, it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do a show. It doesn't sing. Right. It just sits <laughs> there and then you're like, okay, I need the silver. But if you want to wear some jewelry or, or uh, a watch, a watch, a nice necklace, you know, um, good. so, uh, how about real estate? Um, what, what's your, what's your views on uh, real estate investing and, uh, putting your money into it that. it really depends because Miami is going to be a different market than North Dakota and North mm. Dakota is going to be different than Dallas and Dallas will be different than Vegas uh, generally speaking and this is why reconnaissance man is such an important book is mm. <clears throat> you want to stop renting 
as soon as possible. It still oftentimes pays to rent, especially if you're a single guy or single gal. Maybe the house isn't isn't what you want to consider. But inevitably, you're probably going to find a place you want to live, and inevitably, you're going to want to have your own place. Not necessarily because you want to have your own place, because but because predominantly money printer go burr. And you could see this. The I feel bad for the millennials because they came in roughly Obama era, uh, and they just printed off a ton of money. Yep. And okay, we're going to help you with your student loans, and we're gonna we're gonna make college affordable, and we're gonna we're gonna you know we're just print off money. Yep. And, and, Stupid. Uh, so <clears throat> that money inevitably made its way into the housing market over the course of time. Mm -hmm. And when millennials came out of college and they, you know, went through their standard twenties of struggling and trying to find, okay, now they're in their thirties. Like we'd like to buy a house. Well, guess what happened to house prices? You made the house, you made the money supply go up by 500%. Oh, shock. Housing is up 500%. And when housing goes up by 500%, you know what else goes up by 500%? Rent. Yeah. And it's like, the yep. oh, rent's too high. It's like, well, then maybe you shouldn't have voted to print off five times the amount Stupid. of money supply. <laughs> oh, so man. what this presents Young people today uh, is unfortunately an issue. It's you're no longer investing. Like we have been so far removed from the fundamentals. Like when you are looking at that property, you're looking at a rate of return of 14%. You're looking at cash flow. Yep. And it does this amount of money in my pocket each month or each year warrant the price that Aaron also helped me pay. out with my properties while we we're talking that I'm in I'm under contract on a property right now, guys. And I was talking with Aaron about numbers. Sorry, go ahead. So that makes sense. That makes logical. If you're going to look at a stock, you look, okay, what are their earnings? What are their dividends? What do their debts look like? It's That's gone now. It's it's gone. And, and housing was, what were the rents that it could generate? Now, what I'm afraid of is that you're going to have to get into the market somehow, be it the stock market or mm. real estate, just to maintain your purchasing power over time. Mm. Because for example, I, I bought my house well, my first, I'll give you a perfect example. We'll start from my very first house to when I just sold my last house. I paid 160 grand for my first house in 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. I sold my house for 350,000. Nice. All right. The, the day before I moved into my first home, you know what I was paying for rent? What? $333 for a nice studio what? apartment in downtown Minneapolis. What? <laughs> okay. I get now. That was 20 years ago, admittedly, but I get out. You know, I'm paying for rent now until my house is built. What? 1340 a month. Wow. Yeah. Now, I'm sure there's been some advances in construction technology, mm -hmm. but the apartment is not four times better than the one I had 20 years ago. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's a nice faucet. Yeah. Well, those are fancy millennial looking lights that you got over at the use it center or whatever, <laughs> but that's not four times the value. All that was, was more money being printed out. And if I had not invested in my house back then, I'd have nowhere near the amount of wealth that I do now. Right. And what a lot of people don't understand is like, Oh, well, I'll just rent and I'll get into housing sometime. It's like, you almost have to get into housing or some other asset <clears throat> as early as you, as you can, when you should not early as possible. Uh, so that you can basically hedge yourself against inflation because that's where a disproportionate amount of the money will go is housing. There's other ways to do it where you don't have to actually own a home. You can invest in a real estate investment trust mm -hmm. and get the exposure there. Like a syndicate. Yeah, it's a kind mutual of, fund of, of, yeah. of properties. That's it. Okay. Um, you can invest in, in the S&P 500 or whatever <laughs> index you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and that, you know, the, the stock market, I'll give you another perfect example. Shock, the stock market is up 500% since its bottom, and we printed off 500% more money. <clears throat> Did the stocks really go up because Procter & Gamble or GE is five times more profitable now? Mm -hmm. No, there's just five times the amount of money chasing it. So you're not even investing in your 401k or IRA anymore for fundamentals. You're just throwing it in there, kind of in a Weimar Republic, if you remember that, where you'd get paid in midday and bar wheel barrels full of money, mm -hmm. and you go buy a chair. <laughs> Because it's because but if you waited till the end of the day, that's what happened in Zimbabwe. Right? Yeah, in Zimbabwe, uh, yeah. and uh, it, it happened. I think Yugoslavia as well, uh, where you have to convert that cash immediately into something tangible, anything tangible, yep. so you maintain its value. This is kind of a slow burner version of that. Version, where yeah. if we're going to print off, you know, sixty percent money supply increase every year mm -hmm. because of COVID or whatever. Um, <clears throat> that will inevitably find itself into asset prices. Mm -hmm. And so you're not investing because, oh, I made $500. Like I, I didn't make $350,000 on my house because I got to go spend 
$450,000 on the new one, even yep. though my original one cost $160,000. So that is the unfortunate investing landscape young people today face. Is It's like you're not even getting like a real rate of return. It's just right. to stay, to keep yeah, your purchasing float. power even. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Wow, man. Okay. So we got some super chats. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, Myron, nocturnal habits, get him an energy drink. Shout out to Roberto <laughs> F. That is our guy. Roberto. Uh, shout out to Roberto, part of the Fresh and Fit team behind the scenes helping us, guys. Uh, all those awesome emails you guys see, he writes them. So if it spells bad, make fun of him. <laughs> if he misspells anything. Uh, John Wheeler, uh, $15. Drop me by paying tuition. Tom Likas put me on to Aaron's book. Great stuff. Oh, wow. wow. Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. Tom Likas long ago when I was just getting my pubes in, you know, like you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote Worthless and uh, I, I was like looking for people to advertise with. Yeah. And Lycus, man, uh, you know why he has more money than all of us? Why? Well, why? The guy is a pro. He will get back to you. And I Because I, I was trying to contact different podcasters and, and people yeah. to advertise. Tom Lycus' staff, uh, Dino and... Uh, Dino and... and uh, Oh, I get Gary. Gary. We're yeah, trying to yeah. get a hold of him, Gary. Can you help can us? Can, I, I got I probably got you, Gary's email somewhere. Yeah. Can so, you get him on the show? I don't think I could get him on the show, but okay. we have a professional relationship. Okay. And Tom Likas was like, Yeah, let's advertise. We your promise book. to not put a black bag on his head yeah. at the airport. <laughs> no, we <laughs> <I> promise. <laughs> but uh yeah, he was he was probably yeah, my first advertiser, and it was worth every penny because sales went through the roof. He does a good job with the with yeah. the script. Gary and Dino get back to you. And so, um, you know, yeah, reach out to Tom Likas if you want to advertise. Absolutely. It's funny yeah. because uh, he's the reason why I left my uh, marriage. He's the reason yeah. why I, I'm here today because without him, I would not phone the right bill. Yeah. And I know some guys are probably wondering, wait, Fresh was married? Yeah, Stupid. man. He was, guys. To, to a single, single mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, let's keep going with the super chat. You know, yeah, I'll give you some ammo. Leprechaun jokes, okay, bro. You, you cut all the leprechaun you, jokes. You cut, boy. <laughs> okay, uh, any more? Uh, Chris? No, we have no more. Oh, we're good. Okay, all right. Um, and um, cool. all right. Let's see here. Um, eh, okay. Some basic tips for guys in budgeting. Obviously, you're a well-known minimalist. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what what are some tips you would give young guys as far as like budgeting minimalism? Yeah. Uh, how to save their money. Right. I could, I could tell you all day what to do. Mm -hmm. It's You really need to commit to doing it. It's like dieting or working out. So don't bother if you're not going to do it, okay? But the number one thing, spend less than you make. That would be the number yes. one thing. That's where all money problems stem That's from. Where all if people <laughs> didn't spend more than they made, we would have no financial problems. If people didn't borrow money... There'd be no such thing as bankruptcy. There'd be no, uh, <clears throat> at least credit caused uh, financial collapses. Just spend less than you make. If you're going to go into debt, make sure the money you are taking is invested in a uh, an investment that pays a higher rate of interest than what you're paying on that debt. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you are borrowing money for a car or you're borrowing money through your credit card to buy clothes, you are a complete effing moron and need to stop, right? Those things do not go up in value. They do not pay for any, especially the cars. And this is especially for the boys out there. I know all the boys want to get the girls. And you think having a fancy car, plus men do like fancy cars. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But that is probably the second biggest mistake men make is they buy cars they can't afford. They lease, which mm -hmm. is even more of a shame. Um, and, yeah. I've, and you know, we go down there, there's plenty of Ferraris and things like that. Guarantee you 90% of it's bullshit. Yeah. 90% of them are fake. Cause the, what we saw some 26 year old kid, yeah. like that's your dad's Ferrari. If that even, yeah. so, <laughs> and that, so people buy cars outright. Yeah. Pay okay. cash. Pay Absolutely. Cash there's it, right? an entire yeah, chapter yeah. in bachelor pad economics yep, exactly. where I go over yeah. my technique where I will set the range on auto trader or car soup. I'll set the range to the United States. Because there's a car out there somewhere with low miles and under five thousand bucks. Yes, and it's yep. usually worth flying out there to get it and drive it back. Yeah, to get I remember you talking about back. that in the book, and I was yeah. like, "That's." And here's the thing: I still have my old Honda that I had since college. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's in the crapper now, but like I drove that thing since 2014, and I have purposely not been trying to. I've been trying to stave off buying a car, especially being here in Brickell. And I agree that like an automobile expense is a huge unnecessary expense, right. unless like you're for tax break purposes or something yeah. like it's for a business. That's mm -hmm. one thing, but. Yeah. Yeah. So the cars, <clears throat> I would avoid that. But just in general, the rule is you don't borrow money for something that doesn't pay you back. Bam. And another thing, like for, this is the third largest mistake, the number one financial mistake women make, 
is if you're going to borrow money to go to school, by God, it better pay you back. Better. Damn. And don't major in the liberal arts. Don't major in social sciences. Go into engineering. Go into accounting. And if you don't know, don't go. Go work. There you go. Landscape. I like that. Go. If you don't know, don't, don't go. go. Some of you are going to college yeah. undecided. And honestly, those days are done. You can't do that no more. Yeah. And yeah. so you know that's that would be another uh, a major one. Um, and then uh, what we did. Okay. We did spend less than you make. We have uh, don't borrow money. Don't, don't buy do stupid drugs cars. And well, drugs and yeah, okay, common sense. Stuff what about like uh, dropping expenses that you don't need? Yeah. Oh, always cut your expenses. Yeah. And what what you need to do is you need to have some. This is why I said finding your point and purpose in life is one of the most important things you can do. Not only because then you can interact with women and know where you're going in life, but if you know what you want to do, you don't need things. Like, you know, okay, I'm not like some Spartan minimalist that doesn't have stuff. I have a motorcycle. It's used, but I have a motorcycle. Yeah. Um, I'll spend the money on good food because I didn't have good food. We're know? going to get good food after this. Yeah. Yes. And Aaron ain't spending no money. So, oh, but yeah, just getting rid of all the expenses, you know, but what really helps with that is having something else in life. Like, oh, I got my career. I get to go and do this. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, I think I will go for a motorcycle ride. Or, yeah. oh, I, I, I get to work on this project, and I came home, and I, this project is finished. Oh, maybe I will fly to, to Hawaii yeah. and enjoy my life a little bit. Mm -hmm. But if you are, which most Americans are, using things and consumption as a substitute for point and purpose in life. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example. Yep. Do you understand why women spend 10 times the amount on a purse or a handbag because it has that OC on it or the... The Chanel sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or, Tell us. Well, no, but because they got nothing else. Exactly. Yeah. Because they're like, stupid. They think, well, the other girls are going to see it or the Lululemon stuff. Oh, yeah. Or, they call it therapy shopping. Yeah, they're right. They even got it. Yeah. yeah. Well, therapy stupid. for what? Therapy Maybe shopping. you should have a dick inside of you and maybe fall in love. I don't know. But that's just <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah. you know, maybe you have kids. Maybe, maybe have someone, you know. To have things, to have stuff. And men are, yeah. are also, oh, I got a Ferrari. I got a Lamborghini, you know, that kind of thing. That's me. <clears throat> Do you have one? No, I'm saying I'm saying that's going to be me. Mm -hmm. Well, you better pay cash Stupid. for it. You better pay cash. Listen, man. <laughs> here comes here comes the rash light. Listen, yeah. man. Yes, Hands former time. married to a single mom Exotic. person. Exotic. Car oh, oh. Yeah. oh, 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 fired. oh, oh, Roll will get him. Uh, Roll will get him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can hack cars, man. Same way how you hack. The last thing you can hot cars. That's yeah. all I'm gonna say. No, I, well, we know Rich Cooper, and he he goes as long as you do it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's a way to get uh, exotic cars without messing yourself up. Yeah. But I'll keep it real. Most of the time, when guys get uh, exotic cars, it's the way that Aaron's talking about. That yeah, is it is bite. counterproductive to you. Lease it. Yeah, throw money away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, um, Aaron, uh, I got one last one. Oh, we have some chats. Oh, super read? chats. Okay. Um, oh, and we had questions too. We're gonna do a shotgun round of all the of all the questions. We got Chris Garcia. Twenty dollars super chat showing my uh, showing my support for the Fresh and Fit crew. Aaron sharing a wealth of knowledge here. Thanks for sharing and thank you <laughs> for Don the Marco. Chat. You get Don the Marco. Now stop Dre again. Three sixty two dollars. Cappy is sponsored by Spirit Airlines oh. and New Balance. <laughs> you know what? You fucking cheap guy. I got I got my New Balance shoes here. I went running. Oh, Today you do? Okay. Run, running in your neighborhood. You got those dad New Balances? The white ones? I had the white ones. <laughs> and oh, oh, wait, hey, hold on. Hold on. Hang on. Hang oh, on. Oh, my goodness, man. Now, look. It's okay. even worse. It's even worse than that. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you the story about my white New Balance shoes. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> the gym I belonged to before COVID, they um, said recycle shoes because sometimes you have these purest runners. And, like, if there's not a perfect amount, or they only put 100 miles on there and then they get rid of oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. there's this, this box of shoes. And I'm like, Use shoes, man. I saw like, going through it. And I saw like it's got some good tread on it. Well, they were white New Balance shoes, and they were my size. And I must have put on at least two hundred more miles on those things. So I oh, hiked man. up um, Frenchman Peak in Vegas, which is just outside of an Ellis Air Force Base. I'm looking over, and there's actually a little chair up on one of the the ridges. So I'm sitting there, and I got my little feet sticking out like this. And I took a picture of the valley with my feet. And uh, a, a female fan of mine, she's like. What are you, an effing boomer with the white? And are those New Balance? I'm like, yeah, they're New Balance. <laughs> so I got, I got gut for that, but they're good shoes. So <laughs> I, I went through those, and I got a new pair of New Balance shoes. And I had that. And then um, 
I forgot what the other old boomer thing I did was, but yeah, there's nothing wrong. Yelling with at the clouds? No, not yelling God, at the clouds. You goddamn clouds! <laughs> <laughs> Damn, especially in Miami. <laughs> but I, I, I do some other cheap stuff that I'm sure would shock and appall people, like wearing New Balance shoes. But they're fine shoes. Like, oh, <laughs> hey man, what's your happy man? We got CJ with the five hours super chat. How many credit cards do you think a man should have? Which ones do you recommend? What's the maximum credit limit you recommend? Oh, I. I would recommend one, maybe two, in case your credit card is not accepted at <clears throat> gas stations, you know, Shell or whatever. Okay. No more than that. Uh, I have three because I have two companies. So I have my one personal, and then I have one for each company. Mm. Uh, and then asshole consulting. Does no, it say asshole it, consulting on the card. No, oh, it doesn't. Okay. No, I, be funny. I, it's cool though when people are like, "Well, what's your email address?" Like Aaron dot Clary at asshole consulting. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, but uh, the reason I do that is for accounting purposes. Yeah, like course, that's just good business. Is you know this is this is for business. This is for personal. Yeah, do not do commingle. Yep. Uh, and then the balance, I I have to like sometimes contact the credit card company and say I didn't ask for an increase. I don't have a balance more than three thousand. That's my limit, mm -hmm. in case it gets stolen. Now of course they have like guarantee and and you know like if it gets stolen, fraud alert. They, yeah, fraud alert and stuff like that. It is twenty twenty one. Yeah, I I'm thank you. Thank you. <laughs> would you like a pair of New Balance? Uh, I, I would like a pair. I want to go back into 1985. Okay, all right. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I keep the limit pretty low simply because I don't like I don't want to spend that much money. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't have a problem with it because I rarely hit the limit. Usually, it's I'm buying something that I need, like a computer or whatever. Yeah. But for those of you who have trouble spending, get a low limit credit card. There you go. You know, yep. And get it. And and the interest rate shouldn't matter. Why should the interest rate not matter? Because you, because you pay ain't paying interest. Time. You pay it. Every You're not paying interest, effing, guys. You pay it every effing month, and you just get to use it. You get points. I think you if get anything, free money. Yeah, look yep. at points. If you can get traveling expense or whatever. And we will talk about that in the High Value Academy, guys. Don't worry. I, I am a credit card snob, so I'll be helping you guys oh. with that. Um, <laughs> not stop, Dre. Well, uh, wait. Cappy has female fans. JK, Joke. lol. Hello. I have um, several. So. so let's hit some of those questions from earlier. Um, uh, Telegram check. Uh, te they're in Telegram. Okay. Um, so guys, because we had some super chats earlier um, that came through, so we want to make sure that we have them for you guys. So, first question, Gordon W. Any advice for thirty-year-olds switching careers from warehouse work to software engineering? Also, thoughts on Dave Ramsey, Baby Steps. Um, I like the fact he's switching out of warehouse work to software mm -hmm. engineering. Yeah, yep. uh, probably go start with a degree in computer uh, science. Um, <clears throat> Also, test it first. You know, maybe I know a lot of people don't like boot camps, and and this is where you get into the world of of, of IT spurs, where I'll give a bit of advice and they go, yeah, well, technically, I'll, I'll. it's like, look, please, As a matter just, of fact, just for oh, the no, yeah, for the first time in your life, will you please touch a woman's vagina and just get the <laughs> f out of here? <laughs> so, oh, man. Anyway, if you can either self instruct yourself to you know a language. Or go online, or go through Coursera, or take an actual boot camp. Whatever it doesn't have to be the best. You'll at least be exposed, and in like six weeks, hardcore time at a boot camp. Let's just assume the the most uh, uh, rigorous. You'll know for certain whether you should even bother going to get your bachelor's degree. There you go. Okay. What great thing about software uh, engineering programming in general? Um, you don't need the degree. It does help, but yeah. it's whether you so you can. Uh, uh, be an autodidactic one that teaches themselves. But I would just hold off on college or, you know, take a couple classes at the community college. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. one or two, just as you know, because it's fun going and talking to people when they let us back into the, you know, the real world. Um, and then just take it step by step, see if it's what you want to do. And then if you're like, oh yeah, this is it, fine. School. And you should have some programming skills that you could do some low level programming. Just after that as well, just after your point. So my degree is in computer science, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's funny because at my job, there were guys that didn't have a degree that got the job from their projects that they did. Right. And then the guys that were in school, like all they had was a degree, but didn't have experience. Mm. So you're right. You don't have to go to school to get those those jobs. And then also as well regarding um, uh, taking your time, like I could have spent that time learning myself and learning a specific language rather than a general uh, observation. Theory or everything. concept, right. And it's all theory. Mm -hmm. So if you learn yourself in your projects, employers value that way more than a degree. Right, right. So, and that's one of the benefits of choosing that degree. And then yeah. as, as for David uh, Ramsey's baby steps, yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, I like Dave Ramsey, uh, Ramsey a lot. Nice. Okay. He's nicer than me. <laughs> I'm sure he is. He's Christian. Yeah. He doesn't curse. I'm more fun. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, he, no, he's good. I, I, I 
Um, awesome. Aaron Clary owns my prostate. Five dollar super chat. Aaron read all your books. Great work. Thoughts on lawmakers making their move on crypto. I I don't always I don't pay attention to the news. So yeah. what what are they making laws? Is it passing? Yeah, like it's like you know now the IRS is going to start taxing it. Finally, you know it's you know it's. It, uh, gar the government's actually starting to acknowledge cryptocurrency now. You know, we got, you know, Elon Musk invested a couple billion. So, okay. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, shout out to the best uh, fresh and fit Chris and your guest. What age did he decide this was a career for him? At what age? I guess oh, I didn't, I didn't leaving. decide. It just, it felt like the ballroom dance instructor thing. Mm -hmm. That was just going to be a side gig. Yeah. You know, maybe some beer money. And my first class, I ended up making 350 bucks an hour because so nice. many people signed up for class. Um, and then the, uh, the book thing was also like accidental where all of a sudden um, PJ media promoted my book worthless mm -hmm. because they liked it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I'm making thousands of dollars a month. Nice. Bam. Yeah. And then um, asshole consulting, <laughs> I, 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 it's just, which is why a naked leprechaun with a foot fetish who collects <laughs> coins might just work. It <laughs> might just work. It could. So, so the asshole consulting, I remember I was driving back from Albuquerque, New Mexico I'm going through the middle of Kansas at night and I, I didn't have any radio or podcasts on. And I'm just like, you know, all these emails I get, I don't have time to answer. I'm like, what if I was just to be myself and be a dick and start <laughs> charging? Like, look, I ain't got time. I'm bigger. And uh, I don't have time for this. You, you people, you peons better pay me for my genius. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, I bet you I could get a couple bucks. So uh, I got back home. Mm -hmm. And back in the, those days, I was working uh, security for a buddy of mine at the time. Yeah. I had my laptop, uh, laptop out, working night shift like you do. Mm -hmm. And I think in four hours, I set up the domain, programmed this wonderful yeah. website that is just the most professional looking website at assholeconsulting.com. Mm -hmm. Email service, all that other stuff, PayPal, ba da ba da ba. And then I think by day three, I, I'm like, I'll make a couple hundred bucks a month. Day three, I had like, Four hundred dollars in the PayPal account. I'm like, wow, oh. oh. and it's just it just goes to show. Well, it, it's kind of similar. Like we can do what we're told to do: go to college, get yeah. the degree, da 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 da. But but there's some things where it's like take a shot, especially if it doesn't, you know, a couple hundred bucks for a website and some time programming it, and you put your PayPal up there. Yeah. You'd be amazed what takes. Yeah, absolutely, be amazed what takes. Um, so we got a question from uh the Godfather. Uh, what's his opinion on Suze Orman? Oh, gosh, I've never I mean, I'm generally for anyone who is about fiscal discipline. So her, Robert Kiyosaki, mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey, it doesn't matter. They're generally saying the same thing. But the average American is so woefully inept and and, and in debt. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you get the message from. Once you get it. Once you get it. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm for Suze Orman. I'm not familiar with her work. I didn't watch her show or anything like that. Right. The paradox being I majored in finance. So I don't need this stuff. Uh, but I have, I have nothing against her at all. Okay. So final question, Aaron. Mm -hmm. What do you predict is going to happen with the financial markets, with everything going on? What's the economist? I, 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 I <laughs> Let's rumble. Do I talk now? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> I thought it was going to end. I know exactly what's going to happen. Let's do it. To the currency markets. I know exactly what's going to happen to the stock markets. I know exactly what's going to happen to the housing markets. I know everything. But if I tell you, Ooh. then you guys are going to go and take your money and take positions driving up. The, I, I'm going to become a quintillionaire tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen to the markets. I'm not the, there's no way you can know. <laughs> I, this is why I'm the world's greatest economist. I'm going to keep insisting on it because it's tongue in cheek, but it's also increasingly true. I'm the only economist apparently that admits I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> right. You know, oh, gold's going to go up to 20,000. Well, okay, Peter Schiff, we've been waiting for that for a couple <laughs> decades now. Uh, I have no idea. And nobody does. Right. That's the, this is why, like, when people ask for financial advice, should I invest? It's like, I can't tell you. And you know, I'm like, here's some options. You research. I just, <laughs> right. Because, no, there's, and I think what the mistake is, people assume finance and economics. Is mathematical and it yeah. is there obviously you use math and statistics and, and formulate uh, to to conduct economic analysis and financial research and i think that misleads people into thinking like this is a finite hard mathematical science where like in physics it's much balance your code must work yeah um chemical formulas must balance as well there's always balance in the hard sciences this is not a hard science this is this is 
looking into the crystal ball with a lot of math to basically eliminate risk uh, that might give you an arbitrage opportunity or you might be able to buy low before something goes up. But there is no way anyone can know what happens. And if there was, they would never tell you because they would lose their opportunity. Yep. You know, that. So well, there's Aaron, no, I can't tell you what's going to happen. In thank you future. for crashing my dreams. Hello, darkness, my <laughs> <old>. <laughs> Yeah, man. I know. Um, so, guys, um, get let's get, uh, click the link below, guys. Get let's get checked so you guys can get your testosterone <clears throat> check. Yep. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed our little. Uh, thing there. Oh, super chat. Not stop Dre three sixty two dollars. Would Cappy still recommend military for guys? Yes, I, I recommend it for girls too. Your young people are not going to find a better deal mm -hmm. than the military. You're just not. Yeah. Uh, unless you came from wealth and your parents are paying and you're going to become a doctor or something like that. But most of the clients I have, most of the people out there are not rich. And so I would, I mean, that's the one, speaking of like, if we could have done something younger, how much further we had been, if I had just joined the military, Got my 4 year went in as an officer, but had the GI Bill. I'd be at least a quarter million dollars. Because ahead, most of the guys, the millionaires that I know, that was especially had a bad situation, mm -hmm. they joined the military, and the discipline and the drive that they learned from there and the money they got from there mm -hmm. helped them get to where they are right now. Right. So you're right, because they had direction and had focus, and it's kind of like, you know what? I'm in this in this space, in this environment. I have to be a certain type of way, and that, that type of like um, environment breeds if you have the right uh, mindset success right so, i mean uh, you, you end up liking your drill instructor not while you're getting yelled at and having his foot on your neck as he's pushing you down into the mud mm -hmm. but when you're 50 years old and you're yeah. sitting on three million you're like wow if it wasn't for that guy kicking my ass and wouldn't have it and then also on top of it you get health care insurance or health care for the rest of your life it's not it's the va it's not the best i understand there's complaints um <clears throat> yes by the way i didn't know if you knew this you could get shot if you join the military there's there's that risk as well <laughs> but they're just really unless you're going into a very highly disciplined uh skilled area there's just you're not going to get free food clothing shelter money on top of it tuition and health insurance you, you're just not going to get it anywhere yeah. yeah so as a young person i absolutely recommend it right. romar what is cappy's physical type of woman oh what my physical type of woman uh i like them tall Okay. Uh, my girlfriend's tall, and I have a. Oh, well, you have one of those? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've oh, wow. had one for quite some time. I look, you kids go run and date. You go, <laughs> have, you go burn off all your fuel. Uh, <laughs> just whatever you do, don't marry a single mom. Okay. If you were one. Okay, <laughs> oh. Just, Shot. Okay. You know what? <laughs> you know what? And he's been. It's so bad because the fresh has been nothing but nice to me. And I just beat But bro, no, you gotta be. You, know, you gotta let him know that what he did was stupid. So <laughs> no, it was. Uh, it was. So. A girl's ass ideally would back up into this. This should be the rule. <laughs> uh, I know some people like a little more junk yeah, you, in the what trunk. Is, what is that? What, what, is, what is this? Yeah, you got back up into What this? is this? Well, you don't have to. What are those? Yeah. That's, what is, that's what a girl's got to back up into. Her ass has to fit into bro, this. Bro, yeah. if I can't put a cup and leave it there. There's different strokes for different <laughs> folks. I'm not saying this is me. This is okay. me. Okay, okay. Sorry, We're just not going to chase after the same women. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> so I like it if that backs up into this. Okay. I love huge tits. Huge. Like, oh, is it, okay. oh, yeah. I don't know what He's the size. Like, just like ease or whatever goes beyond a double D. Like yeah. I want big Franken cans. Uh, hourglass figure, obviously. Long hair. I like blue eyes. Uh, my girlfriend has the prettiest blue eyes uh, ever. Um. Yeah, that's the, that's physically the type of gal that I want. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'd be alone in this category. So. Okay, uh, CJ, two dollars. What country do you think is best to retire in? And then we're gonna uh, then we're gonna close the show. Uh, I don't know, uh, and that's my next step beyond Operation Evil is I'm gonna have to go and do some reconnaissance in Barbados. Well, I don't make I oh, the hell island no. stupid. That's my, that's my island, bro. Yeah. yeah, but it's an island, and you get like island fever. If you're stuck there. Rassel, man. Like, trust me, bro. Yeah. It's paradise, bro. It's paradise. I, I know. You ain't there, nigga. <laughs> how, how, far <laughs> I, how, how far can I ride my motorcycle? What's that going to take me? Five minutes to go across the you're, I'm not going to lie. You're right. It's so small. Uh, uh, so I'm going to go to Southeast Asia. Check that out, including the Philippines and Japan, because Modern Life John would kill me if I didn't. Of course. Of course. Um, yeah. I'm also going to he check. He says hello. About oh, man. Good. Shout out to John from Modern Life Danny. He's watching. Uh, I'm going to probably stop in Dubai. Or Bahrain. Okay. Check that out. I'm I'm pretty sure I just want to see it while I'm out there. I have a feeling it's not gonna be my cup of tea. And then Central Europe or Eastern Europe and check that out. Uh and just see. And then there's piece me wants to check out Morocco as well. There you mm. go. I know a lot of people are like, oh Morocco, oh, you know, terrorists and this and that. It's like, yeah, okay, but I don't know. I I got some fans out there too. And then <laughs> the, the final loop, I uh, a lot of people talk about Panama. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Belize is also an English speaking country mm-hmm. um, that's down in the in Central America area as well. And I'll I'll kind of go from there. And I'm not I'm not necessarily looking for low taxes. I'm just looking for stable, mm-hmm. culturally stable country. Okay. Where I'm not, you know, they, they got they're warning people about the Muppets. It, Disney's, did you guys hear about this? No. Yeah. <laughs> like they're saying, oh, the, there's a warning now when you watch the Muppets. Like these Muppets were made at a certain time where cultural differences were different. And oh not, you know, my and God. I'm, I'm like, what the? We're that politically correct now, bro? Yeah. yeah. Stupid. And, and then here's another thing. Of, yeah. They banned Dr. Seuss? Seuss? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So wow. th- I want to, I kind of like, uh, and another thing I forgot to mention, Man, I, this is more out. important. This is more important. I'm sick and tired of fe- seeing fat people. That's I'm true. so sick and tired. That's true. And I'm not talking with, I'm talking fat disgust. Now I'm from Minnesota, so there's more of them than there are down here. But even yeah. here, I'm like, what the, what? <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I was like thinking like. Body positivity, be, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. America now. That's why the average woman is, well, 170 pounds of 570, five foot four? Yeah, five foot yeah. three. Yeah. So I want to see pretty women and handsome men who are composed when they go out in public. Wait, are you saying that women can't be fat? How dare no, they, you? They, as a libertarian, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> They're just going to suffer the consequences. Exactly. There Bam, there there's go. consequences to your actions, well you said. bimbos, you fat bimbos. But anyway, with that said, guys. Oh, we have one more. Oh, another one. Uh, Cappy's really He's like herpes. Like, he never okay. goes yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Drink. <laughs> uh, guys, get the, let's get checked. Click the link below. Yep. Get in there. Get your testosterone checked. Uh, support us. It's gonna. It helps us out as well. Yep. Uh, where can the people find you, Aaron? Assholeconsulting.com would probably be the. If you need to contact me about consulting, cool. if you want to find all my work, the best site is an old boomer blog, replete with uh, New Balance shoes. There you go. Called CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com, and on the top left, you'll see a link to everything, including like YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Um, Links to my books on Amazon. If you want to find my books, just go to Amazon and search Aaron. Or you can go on Audible and pay a lot less and then not give Aaron any of your Well, I don't know why it's $3 a book. uh, Holy cow. Yeah, they don't love you anymore, man. But anyway, yeah. So uh, assholeconsulting.com would be the main one. Captain Capitalism at Blogspot if you just want to link to everything. Otherwise, you just search my name. You'll find me. And follow him on Instagram at at Clary. Aaron. Aaron follows us on Instagram now. Yeah, finally. Finally. So, Everybody get a hold of him. Teach him how to use the thing. He <laughs> messaged me, DMs me yesterday. How, what does this ad post thing to your story mean? Like, I was like, what? Come, come <laughs> on, Aaron. Uh, oh, also, guys, uh, we're going to have a Zoom call right after this with our higher tier patrons and the high value academy guys. Yep. Uh, special with Aaron Clary as the guest. Uh, Rose yes. also is Rose going to join us? Huh? Yeah, Rose, Rose, yeah, yeah, join yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll do and it then, for about 45 minutes, guys. Then yeah, we got to go eat. You got to eat. Stick bites. Stick and bites. also, we get, yes, he says, uh, no late night show with Captain Girls. Yes, we will have girls. Tonight we will have on yeah. the show. We got. We so will we, have we gotta a late hurry. night show, guys. We got to hurry. We got to hurry. Oh, we got it. We got to hurry. Make this happen, Boom. guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. patreoncom slash fit. Get in right now. High Value Academy. We're gonna get Zoom do call. the Zoom call. And our awesome outro is now. Peace.